we are aware of a certain type of individuals in this world. They are just like the barbarians in Diablo II, always confronting their enemies head-on, no matter how devious those enemies may be. They use courage and strength to win battles. In the history of animal evolution, there's also a fearless warrior today's protagonist, the cartilaginous fish. Among the most representative cartilaginous fish today are the various fierce sharks. Cold-blooded, swift, and cunning, they have become synonymous with deep-sea fear in various forms of art. However, beneath this imposing exterior lies billions of years of brutal battles. Normally, when I introduce any animal, I tend to start from its origins. However, the academic community's views on the origin of cartilaginous fish are not unanimous. This is evident from the name cartilaginous fish itself. Despite the fierce appearance of modern sharks, many of their skeletons are made of cartilage. Once dead, their bodies quickly decay. So you might think that shark fossils are all like this, but in reality, their fossils, especially those of early sharks, are often incomplete. Thus, some believe that they, like all jawed fish, are descendants of ancient ostracoderms, especially closely related to a group called Acanthodii, ancient fish. There are also some who argue for the independent origin of cartilaginous fish, possibly evolving their jaws independently. This argument is based on the fact that teeth, scales, and spines, similar to those of modern sharks, were found in the geological layers before Placodermos appeared. But since this is a popular science video, we won't delve into this academic debate. The only thing we can be sure of is that during the early Devonian period, as jawed fish swept through half the world's animals, the earliest definite cartilaginous fish fossils appeared in the geological layers. The timelines of various viewpoints converge here. So let's begin the story of cartilaginous fish from this point. As mentioned before, around 400 million years ago, in the Devonian oceans, the top ecological niche was occupied by placiderms, while in freshwater, lobe-finned fish dominated. These creatures were strong, armed with sharp teeth and tough armor. If you've watched my previous videos, you know that heavy armor isn't always the best choice. Cartilaginous fish understood this well. Apart from retaining a few spines, they gave up most of their armor. Instead, they've evolved a composite vertebral column, completely enclosing their notochord. This composite vertebra was a significant leap in terms of strength and flexibility. Most importantly, they greatly optimized their gill structure, making their breathing more efficient. Through these evolutions, cartilaginous fish finally evolved into what we see today, sharks with a regal air about them. For the sake of narrative convenience, I'll refer to all upcoming cartilaginous fish as sharks. Did this transformation have any impact? The answer is evident it brought enormous benefits. Towards the end of the Devonian period, a global marine anoxia event occurred. Placoderms, with their heavy armor, were severely hindered in their evolutionary potential. Their inability to open their mouths wide or expand their gills freely led to suffocation during this event. Cartilaginous fish, however, survived this event with their superior respiratory capabilities and became a mainstream group alongside bony fish in the new era. Cartilaginous fish flourished during the Carboniferous and Permian periods. This was a remarkable era of evolution for them marked by various strange-looking species. Sharks with peculiar shapes, alongside creatures like Tully Monster and Typhlyesis, created a marvelous underwater world. But wait, there's more. Meet the group known as Eugeniodontida. 
The most famous representative of this group is the Helicoprion. Discovered in the Ural Mountains of Russia, the fossilized teeth of this strange creature stumped scientists for over a century. It wasn't until 2013, with high-precision scanning and a fossil containing soft tissue traces, that it was determined these teeth were located inside the lower jaw, near where a tongue would be. This unique tooth structure was likely used to extract meat from the shells of cephalopods, like a can opener. In addition to Helicoprion, Eugenia dontida includes other enigmatic species like Parahelicoprion and Edestus, the functions of their teeth still debated. Considering the difficulty of preserving complete cartilaginous fish fossils, these bizarre-looking creatures likely represent only a fraction of their heyday. Unfortunately, a cataclysmic event followed the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, the most severe extinction event in history, wiping out 97% of marine species globally. The oceans then faced prolonged ocean acidification due to elevated temperatures, making it the darkest period in marine history. Yet, true warriors faced the bleakest situations head-on, and cartilaginous fish were such warriors. Despite surviving the mass extinction as a minority, they continued to thrive in this grim world. For instance, during the Triassic, the hybodontiforms proliferated, appearing to recapture the glory of cartilaginous fish. However, they soon faced cunning adversaries. Starting in the Triassic, a group of terrestrial vertebrates began venturing into the oceans, catching cartilaginous fish off guard. These terrestrial vertebrates developed unconventional strategies over their long evolution. Breathing air directly with lungs and possessing waterproof skin allowed them to easily transition between freshwater and saltwater habitats, much like you, the viewers, can swim in both rivers and oceans. Thus, freshwater became a refuge for these creatures. If I can defeat you, I'll compete with you in the sea. If I can't defeat you, I'll hide in freshwater without large sharks, waiting for an opportunity. In the face of these unscrupulous tactics, cartilaginous fish continued to confront their opponents head-on. Amidst competition with these new adversaries, a new group of cartilaginous fish began to rise, Elasmobranchia. They chose to strengthen themselves to counter these land invaders. Firstly, they abandoned the passive flow of water over their gills and instead actively pumped water through them, resembling a steam engine transformed into a turbine. With this modification, sharks finally became competitive with terrestrial vertebrates that could breathe air directly. This adaptation also allowed for larger body sizes, breaking previous limitations. Secondly, cartilaginous fish further upgraded their cartilage, increasing calcium content and even incorporating calcified cartilage resembling Kevlar embedded in fiberglass. This enhancement provided both strength and resilience. Coupled with strong muscles spanning their bodies, sharks gained significant strength and speed, making them formidable against terrestrial competitors. Moreover, sharks maintained their smooth dermal denticles that covered their skin, optimized to reduce hydrodynamic drag underwater. This feature enabled sharks to swim faster, yet another boost to their agility. With their enhanced speed, some sharks even used high speeds to generate water pressure, forcing water rapidly through their gills. Humans have applied a similar principle in the design of ramjet engines and supersonic aircraft. Sharks also possessed exceptional senses, including hearing, vision, and particularly smell. Their olfactory capabilities allowed them to detect faint traces of blood several kilometers away. Additionally, sharks had bioelectrical sensors, able to sense electric signals from muscles, detecting prey even before they made a move. But wait, there's more. Some sharks developed the sharpest teeth among vertebrates, constantly replacing them to maintain their razor-sharp state. 
their teeth were designed not to wear down. These sharks wielded tons of bite force. Around 85 million years ago, during the late Cretaceous, possibly in what's now the western United States, a shark named Cretoxerina, possibly exceeding 7 meters in length, competed with other marine predators like Kylosaurus. Smaller but unique species like crow sharks participated in battles against various Mosasaurus. Unfortunately, 65 million years ago, a meteorite convinced both sides to halt the war with an undeniable truth. However, after the dust settled, only two groups of marine reptiles remained, sea turtles and sea snake. But it seemed they couldn't climb to the top of the food chain but the shark family managed to survive overall. Now, a new enemy arose. Just as cartilaginous fish were striving to regain their former glory, whales entered the ocean. Some sharks specialized in hunting whales, and with the increase in whale size over time, this niche turned extreme around 20 million years ago with the emergence of Carcharodon megalodon. This apex predator, with a length exceeding 10 meters and bite force surpassing 10 tons, had a massive body that allowed it to maintain slightly elevated body temperatures compared to the environment. Coupled with impressive strength, speed, and sensory capabilities, Karsharodon megalodon became a nightmare for large whales. Its presence kept the size of most whales suppressed below 9 meters for a long time. However, whales also had their own advantages. The warm-blooded viviparity of mammals and echolocation abilities granted whales the capability to stand up against sharks. Thus, whales evolved their ultimate weapon, Liviaton melvilli. While Basilosaurus, in earlier times, was a minor player utilizing shallow waters for its advantage. Liviatan Melville emerged as a direct adversary to sharks, engaging in head-to-head -head combat. While adult individuals of Carcharodon, Megalodon, and Liviatan Melville are unlikely to prey on each other, they both target large whales as their prey. Their habitats also significantly overlap, making competition inevitable. However, just like the ancient war between Cretoxerina and Tylosaurus, the million-year-old feud between Carcharodon Megalodon and Liviaton Melville ultimately came to an end due to a natural catastrophe. About three million years ago, for reasons that are not entirely clear, there was a major collapse in the population of marine diatoms. This event had an immediate impact on the diatom-eating krill, leading to a significant decline. Subsequently, the unfortunate victims were the large baleen whales that relied on krills as their food source. With each step up the food chain, the losses became even more severe. This chain of events eventually led to the extinction of Carcharodon megalodon and Liviaton melvillae, which were apex predators preying on the large baleen whales. Ironically, the baleen whales, which had been facing difficulties, emerged as the ultimate winners in this ecological shift. In the Quaternary period, the oceans once again became abundant, but the constraints posed by those prehistoric giant predators were no more. As a result, baleen whales experienced explosive growth in size, eventually giving rise to the largest creatures the planet had ever seen, such as the blue whale which could exceed lengths of 30 meters. However, the struggle of sharks did not come to an end. The extinction of large predators created an opportunity in history for medium-sized and small predators. In less than a million years, the relay baton of dominance was passed among smaller-sized great white sharks and orgas. Thus, in the oceans of the Quaternary, carrying on this long-standing feud. Until today, looking back on the endless battles spanning 200 million years, the generations of the shark family have carried forward 
the courage of their warrior successors. As long as the fight continues, hope will not be extinguished, and the glory of that past empire will never truly fade away. Sharks can proudly declare to the world that they have not been defeated.